What's up, friends? Let me start with a quote from a paper we just published two weeks ago. CrossFit, a sport that pushes the boundaries of human physiological capacity and strength through concurrent training. It presents a unique arena to test physical fitness on a global scale. Since 2011, CrossFit Inc. has hosted a worldwide open competition that invites hundreds of thousands of athletes to perform, perform the same workouts over three to five weeks, culminating into one of the most extensive fitness tests globally. So here the question arises, is CrossFit rather a sport or is it some kind of training program just like Zumba or aerobics to keep people fit and healthy? Obviously, I'm talking about the quarterfinals and kind of the carnage that happened through the video revision process. Instead of complaining all the time about, yeah, these athletes were maltreated and the video process was, was bad, probably that's correct, but I rather want to provide you some clear and concise tips to improve the whole process of finding the right people that can qualify to the games. Going from the open, quarterfinal, semifinals, eventually culminating into the games. I will give you two concrete tips. One tip will be rather focused on the open and improving the quarterfinal itself. And then another tip would be from a completely different perspective where I would actually provide very little, let's say, emphasis on the CrossFit Open, but to a rather bigger season, CrossFit season, to improve the whole qualifying process. Ready for it? Let's go. Hi everyone, I'm Gomar, I'm a senior scientist at ETH Zurich and next to publishing papers about CrossFit and exercise and nutrition in general, I also like to work out myself, specifically in the sport of, of CrossFit, so it, it's close to my heart. So this year there were some serious problems with the, the qualification progress, not from the Open to the quarterfinals, but rather now or just one week ago from quarterfinals towards the semifinals. So how it is structured now? First of all, the CrossFit Open is still a very community event. It is as I put a lot of emphasis by CrossFit on it. It's three weeks, one workout per week. It's very inclusive programming uh, going from Thursday, so with the open qualification and the open announcement towards Monday, so people can submit their workouts uh, throughout that period. Uh, it's one workout important and the top 25 percentile, so a large percentage of people, actually move on from the open towards the quarterfinals. It costs $20, so it, uh, it, the revenue for CrossFit is pretty large here, up to $7 million, depending a little bit on how many people sign up, uh, uh, usually around 400,000. So that's how it is now. A large percentage of people actually move from the open towards the quarterfinals. I have some problems with this because it doesn't really make the sports more professional. And that's the whole point of this little video. So what a potential improvement could be for CrossFit and for the community, but also for elite athletes, would be to put more emphasis on the quarterfinals and mostly quarterfinals as a live event. I will explain you now. So, Three weeks still, so a potential improvement for the CrossFit Open would be three weeks still, but now two workouts per week or in this time frame, in this long weekend. Also from Thursday to Monday. And why I would say this, because you would have then six workouts in three weeks. It provides you much more, let's say, options for programming. And I think an important part or an important improvement that could happen here is to add some movements that are also good for tall athletes. But it, because it's really well known now, that first of all, there's more and more uh, yeah, different parts or different sides of athletes entering the Open. And they all feel quite negative about online qualifications because it's always, or most of the times, it's for smaller athletes. So if you could then add, for example, wall balls and rowers, maybe not mandatory, but let's say informally mandatory to, to add to these workouts, you could obviously have a more even field. Some people make the argument, yeah, it doesn't matter, CrossFit is a sport and it just favors small athletes. Just like basketball or uh, high jump favors tall athletes. I'm not fully agreeing with that. Why? Because you have the potential or the possibility to actually program some movements that are actually good for tall athletes, which is not possible in other sports. For example, as I said, wall balls and rowing. If you put a workout like that into, for example, an open 
an open qualification. It's a much better test compared to, for example, this year where there was a lot of hinging and mostly sm smaller athletes would be much better. So you have much more options to program, let's say, a more variety of workouts, which I think is very important in the open. And then now the, the key point comes. The top 800 of each region moves towards an in-person competition, in-person uh, regional competition. I will get to that uh, later. So not the top 25 percentile, I think it's way too many. 800 per region. It costs a little bit more because you have more uh, workouts and the revenue would bump up to, let's say, if the same amount approximately of people would sign up to 10 million instead of $7 million. So you have a little bit more uh, room to play with as a CrossFit HQ because I understand that money is a, is a large driving factor of, of these thoughts here, right? So what is important is that the video review here would be less of an important factor in the whole, let's say, open or open qualification process. Why? Because CrossFit could provide very detailed instructions on how to set up cameras. From what I learned, this was not the case now in the quarterfinals. This is a massive problem, obviously. Some people put their angle a little bit differently. So uh, you can have very detail, detailed, even with a, with a whole uh, blueprint on how to put those cameras on beforehand, well-structured, so the athletes and the coaches know what to do. This is key. The same with movement standards. There were a lot of problems, obviously, with the box step-ups this year. So what you can do first, not program box step-ups. I don't think it's, it was a good idea to, to program box step-ups. Uh, program movements that you can actually, uh, yeah, clearly see as a judge that were good reps. For example, snatches, uh, burpee box jump overs. I'm thinking about uh, bar muscle ups, etc. That's one. But also give very, very detailed instructions of every movement before the open begins. All right. As CrossFit HQ, you have to put in some time in this. Now, just thinking. The video review process takes so much time for, from so many people at CrossFit HQ, it's maybe better to allocate that time to prepare a good video reviewing process instead of just doing everything uh, ad hoc. Um, and then you're not going to review all the 800 qualifying athletes. That's impossible. So what you want to do is you just randomly pick 100 qualifying athletes per region. That's still a lot of video reviewing. All right, and you just know as an athlete, there's a chance I won't get reviewed, there's a chance that I will get reviewed. It's just impossible to do a, a very thorough a video reviewing process of all these athletes. So you have to go with the judge, a good registered judge, as well as just a good video reviewing process of a certain amount of athletes. That is just how it is. There's always pros and cons, and I think this is the best, let's say, uh, solution. And what is important, I think, that every video mandatory is made public. You put it online in some kind of depository or even on YouTube. And then even maybe the community on the, on the maybe I'm just not next year or within two years, but on the longer term, maybe the community can actually uh, provide some information or some video reviewing. I think there would be a lot of people highly interested in this. And then you can potentially see, ah, this video is getting flagged by a lot of people. Then as a, um, as a judge, professional judge, uh, pointed by HQ can then provide more information on that video revision process. That's something I think that would also be potentially. So a more improved, I would say, video review process is definitely necessary to make this sport a little bit more uh, professional. Good, so we come from the open. We have 400,000 athletes approximately. 800 per region, I think if I'm correct, there are seven regions, would provide or would go to the quarterfinals. And these are not Life, this, and these are not online competitions anymore. Here is the biggest difference, I think, with the previous seasons I would, I would provide. So they would be live competitions. And how do I see this? There would be four live events per region. 200 athletes per event times four is obviously those 800 qualified athletes from the Open. It would be one weekend for workout. So I think it's possible. If you have, for example, a workout of 15 minutes or at least a time period of 15 minutes where the workout have to be done, all right? Then you need approximately four hours to get all the athletes through, through uh, one workout. And, it, and it's important, it can be relatively small scale with, let's say, professional judges. So you don't have to make this some kind of semi-final or games 
thing where you have tele television and everything or uh, at least live streaming on YouTube and uh, all the commentators and a lot of money with all the, the good camera angles and so on. It can be some kind of throw down uh, small event that is sponsored by HQ and is organized by a certain uh, affiliate or CrossFit box or within some kind of gym that I think is, is definitely possible if you allocate a certain amount of funding uh, to, do, to people who want to organize this a little bit from the bottom up like CrossFit likes. Uh, and important, it starts let's say one month or even a little bit more, 70, 80 days after the open, so you can do a proper video revision uh, process. You don't have to like uh, push everything within win one week, which clearly didn't really work and there were a lot of uh, unprofessional errors this year, in my opinion. So take your time to the video review and process and then have four live competitions which fund as the quarter finals. So 40 athletes per region would then advance to the semi-finals and then the semi-finals would go on in, let's say, June, early June, uh, at the end of May, just like it is now. Fully televised, uh, with commentators, a lot of spotlights. These are the best athletes. People want to see those, right? Like the regionals, like the sanctionals in the time. People love these competitions. It also, I think, it drives the sport, all right? But getting those athletes there does not need to happen via pure online qualifications. I think it's not always uh, that fair and uh, it advantages certain athletes and so on that doesn't do that well in live competitions. You want to get the best ones out there. And then obviously the semi-finals go as always, uh, the best athletes, the top 10 athletes or the top 11, depend a little bit on which region you are, move on to the CrossFit Games. I would not change that too much. I think that is, there's little controversy about that. It's rather the quarterfinals. Good, so a summary, more workouts in the open, that's one. The revision of the video process be a little bit more, let's say, structured with the, not only the, the video revision, like where the angles have to be, but also on the movement standards. Be clear to the athletes uh, about that. You have a long off-season to prepare this and also provide this information to the coaches well on beforehand. There would be much less athletes advancing from the open towards the quarters. I think it's way too many now. It's just confusing and unprofessional. Uh, it's maybe fun to do workouts with your friends uh, in the quarter finals if you're let's say a bubble athlete but I think for an elite sport and a professional sport we don't need this and obviously the quarterfinals are like these throwdown events within uh, a certain uh, region where everyone has to go on uh, live and this would be a 200 approximately athletes per event accumulating to 800 athletes per region so that's one way of improving quite drastically the whole qualification process towards the open. That's one way, all right? So that's, let's say, tip one. Tip two would be a completely different mindset or vision. It would be kind of making the open completely or let's say mostly irrelevant for elite athletes. I'm talking about elite athletes, right? Making the sport professional. Not for the everyday crossfitter like you and me, but rather for crossfit uh, elite athletes. So how do I, I see this? We have the Open, right? We have a lot of revenue from that, around six to seven million dollar. Uh, and we should or could use that money a little bit better to not allocate that to people who do their video revisions. I think it's it's anyway subjective and maybe not the best way to allocate money. It would be much better to just make some kind of CrossFit season of life competitions, just like almost every other sport has, just for your interest, right? And so you make, diff there are already, already a lot of uh, competitions now, like the French Throwdown, uh, etc. You just keep those competitions and you make some kind of season throughout the whole year. And you also, as CrossFit HQ, obviously provide some funding to several uh, competitions to provide also more competitions worldwide. How do you entry those competitions? That's obviously the, the, the question. First, 80% or 70% of the athletes would be just coming from the world rankings. There's already a world ranking now, so you could use that. And also when the sport progresses, those uh, world rankings would be more based on live competitions. And then 20 or 30%, you just qualify via uh, open or via online qualifications where obviously the, the event organizers or CrossFit HQ that obviously is something that that I don't know could also get a lot of revenue from right because you also need to, to subscribe for this and, and provide uh, some money so that would be a much better idea from my uh, perspective some people ask them yeah okay but what about the open the open is so fun like it's always fun to compare myself to life to to elite athletes that doesn't have to go away 
So what you do, you start, you kickstart the season in January or, or uh, end of end of January, begin of February with the open. Still there, you do the open announcements, you do everything how it is now, but just the leaderboard is just not relevant for the whole CrossFit season. You don't use online qualifications just like the open or the quarterfinals or to advance to the next stage it's just too subjective and just not very fair in my opinion as an elite athlete good and then you just have these several competitions going from let's say march towards all the way up to july all over the world you organize these competitions i'm sure a lot of people would be highly interested in getting those competitions and you make for example some majors just like in the the, the golf season you also have majors there uh, where you can allocate more points towards and for example you could also televise those better or get commentaries like the rogue invitations uh, invitational uh, etc that's also uh, a possibility you could you could do maybe not next year or in two years but maybe later on and then you just accumulate points and then the the ones the top 40 athletes uh, males and females just uh, get towards the games at the end of uh, gt july good and then you also uh, get more points towards the games and then you just have then a world ranking so that would be the season maybe even push the games towards september that would also be uh, useful so that's how I see it. Let me know in the comments if you have other ideas or you think that some things that I said were just not very relevant to the sport. I'm happy and I'm very uh, interested in learning those. That was it for today. If you found this video valuable, just give us a, a like and also a subscribe. And for now, see you in the next one. Ciao.